On today's show, we start breaking down the matchups. We get into the news, of course, and this news section in particular, very juicy. A lot of injury updates, a lot of movers and shakers happening in the NFL. Make sure you stay tuned so you're up to date on everything. And, of course, it's Thursday. Jason's Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Don't miss it. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Boys football time. Oh, there what are you, you stepping on me? What I, was that? I thought you were waiting for the boys and gr- ladies and gentlemen, boys no. and girls. No, I was being very intentive and making sure that the it's football time got in there. I've missed it the past two weeks, allegedly, provable by audio. But I said I'm not going to miss it this time, and then you come in like a like a bull in a china shop. Mm. I have this beautiful moment set up and you're just the amount of times I have been compared to a bull in a china shop is a lot. It's a lot. Really? No, not really. For clumsiness? Just for being fat, Mike. <laughs> Are we going to gloss over the fact that you combined attentive and intentional and said intentive? Well, look, we've talked about it on this show before. Just because something is not a word, if I say it and you know exactly what I mean, it's now a word. No, no, no. Here's the truth. As soon as he said it, I Googled it because I was like, that's not a word. It is a word. Intentive and and it means exactly what he he meant. So I'll sit here and wait for the apology, Al Borland. It's kind of like a few days ago, Al, when you said something was uneatable. And I'm like, <laughs> I believe you mean inedible because uneatable just sounds really stupid. And then we looked it up, and apparently that is a real stupid word. Welcome to the footballers. Sincerest apologies. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I'm your host, Mike the Fantasy Hitman, right? Joined by Jason Moore. I believe, I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe we could say I am your best friend forever now. At this point. <laughs> At this point, sure it's, it's going to be forever. Like our fearless leader, Andy Holloway, is just gone forever. But in actuality, he is down with the sickness. Arizona, man, it is going around. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if we're getting chemtrailed. I don't know what's going on because my my household now has two sick children. Oh, Coming off the heels of the third one missing a week of school just a, a couple weeks ago. How is the Moore household? Are you holding up? The Moore up? household is finally fine. I, I was down for a month, and uh, when I went to the doctor, they said some nasty viral cold has been going around. So Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not been good here in, in the desert. But Andy's out. That means we're joined by the cardboard extraordinaire. <laughs> Jay Grizz holding it down on the <laughs> eating the salmons, sleeping in caves, doing what he does. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Thursday. We are going to break down some matchups. We're going to get those, ooh, starts of the week. Mm. And, of course, the boom, boom kicker of the week from none other than the guru of fantasy kickers, Mr. Jason Moore. Nothing I love more than a good kicker. Absolutely. If you want to watch the show, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Follow us on Instagram. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. You can follow Jason on the IG. See what he's up to at Jason FFL. You want to see what shoes I'm wearing? Because basically I post about my shoes on IG, but that's what you're supposed to do, right? Am I, I doing that right? Look, I have no idea. I have no <laughs> idea how to use Instagram, but I, I will post something today. So go to Instagram.com slash Jason FFL. And see what I post. I have no idea what I'm going to do. It's going to be amazing. I'm at FF Hitman on there. If you want to look, I got some, I got a sweet pants shoes combo going on today. Very excited to share that. Follow Andy at Andy Holloway. Quick question of the day. Which player reminds you the most of your middle school self and why? All right. So 
we talked about this yesterday, and it was it was a pretty quick answer for me because I rem- I know what the, my middle school self was. The player that reminds me of my middle school self is Baker Mayfield. Okay, because I thought I was the shiz. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like I thought I was the best at everything. You know, I was super funny, and I loved sports, and I could beat anybody at sports, and. Then it's it's it kind of turned out I wasn't as good at mm. those sports as I thought I was, and me and uh, a guy named BJ, you know how his life went, um, in middle school. Uh, he, oh, okay, he, yeah, I'm I'm with it. We're now. the only two kids, all right, in middle school to not make the football team. <laughs> That's a true story. Wait, in, they. they they told kids they couldn't play exactly, in but they did high. Yes, in ju- in freshman, everybody you just sign up to make the team, but in junior high, you had to try out, and and they let all but two, all but two in. So apparently, I was not as good as I thought I was, and right now Baker is not as good uh, in the NFL as he and others thought he was going to be coming in this year, uh, and uh, he's funny. So uh, th- that's uh, my middle school self is Baker Mayfield. I'm going to go with Tom Brady. Interesting. Now, if you got to rem- it's a long time because ago. Because he was great. No, no, I mean, that, that's built in. But no, part of it, if you go back, it's, it's a long time ago. Tom Brady wasn't always like fashionable, handsome. Sure. He was, he was sloppy and a weird looking dude in college somehow. He grew out of that phase, and now he is the goat. He is the Tom was, Brady we all know and we love. I think it was as soon as he married a, a supermodel. No, nah, well, just like well, okay, okay the, we're gonna the, have to fix some of this. The handsome transformation started a little bit before that. So if you go back and you look at me in middle school, things were awkward. It was not peak Mike Wright. It took till my thirties till I really hit my stride. But now you, you but now you, but said now you the got goat. it. Okay, okay, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> All right, check out BooklandGiveaway.com. We're still we're giving away that Saquon Barkley signed Saquon Barkley jersey. It's from Pristine Auction. Still a couple days left to enter. Jason, it's time to talk about the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Great Scott! The Arizona Cardinals have signed. Not only Alfred Morris, which was a couple days ago, then right after we ended the podcast, news broke. The Cardinals are bringing in Zach Zenner. David Johnson did not practice Wednesday. Jason, I'm on red alert. Yes. I am fully on red alert for for DJ to miss this week. I won't go as far to say multiple weeks, but that's at least a thought in the back of my head. And now it's a thought in everybody else's head because I said it out loud. Yeah, this is a DJ and DJ problem. Uh, they, they're the the backup to the backup is DJ Foster. We call it a DJ squared. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's out, and David Johnson looks like they are are certainly not sure that he's going to be able to play this week. Uh, you know, he look. Cliff Kingsbury said on Friday, if the game was today, he couldn't play. Then right. Sunday rolled around, and he basically didn't play. Now he is not practicing. Uh, and they signed up <laughs> two backup running backs. I don't know how we can expect him to play at this point, um, but I think you know there was a there was an inch of worry where it was like, oh man, you're bringing in two. Is this one of those we've seen these situations before, where all of a sudden, unexpectedly, after a transaction, so and so goes on the IR? Oh, I mean, don't, we saw it with don't Josh, say that. We saw it with Josh Gordon, right? That you, right. you trade a number two pick for Muhammad Sanu, and you're like, really? And then Josh Gordon goes on IR. But I so I had that worry for a minute, but then as I looked further into it, the DJ Foster being back, uh, being also injured, and leaving only Chase Edmonds as the only running back, I think they had to sign two players. They did, but so this week I'm expecting DJ out. Speaking of Josh Gordon, the play, the Patriots did place him on injured reserve. It ends his 2019 season with the Patriots. However, all the talk is as soon as he is healthy. They're going to release him, and that could happen sooner than later. And then he's free to sign. This well, this is he's just he's done with the Patriots. They're moving on. 
this is what they've chosen to do. They'd rather have Mohamed Sanu for the cost of a second-round pick. Sean Payton has said that Drew Brees may be a game-time decision for the Arizona Cardinals. Drew Brees, or against the Arizona Cardinals. Drew Brees himself yesterday said he expected to play this week against Cardinals. Yesterday I said there is a 0% chance of Drew Brees playing, and I did that based on um, logic. Uh, I don't have any idea in the world. Rational coaching, Jason, I know it gets the, us all. The fallacy of rational coaching, but why in the world would the Saints against the Cardinals before the bye bring back at home? I mean, you're you're gonna win the game with Teddy. You like probably pretty easily. And so to to bring him back one week before the bye just makes very little sense to me. Um but we need to be aware as a fantasy community that Breeze is saying he expects to play um, and that it's a possibility of game time decision. I still don't think it happens. Alvin Kamara and Jared Cook remain sidelined for Wednesday's practice. They both missed this past week's game. That stinks because Jared Cook would have gone off against the Cardinals because yes. he plays tight end. Josh Hill? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's, what a world we live in. It's the Cardinals. Packers coach Matt LaFleur. Said Devontae Adams could go right up to game time for a decision on if he's going to play. For fantasy purposes, how does this help you? They're at the Sunday night game. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those situations where maybe <laughs> you can <laughs> grab, you know, Geronimo Allison's been on waivers sure. or some of those guys. And, and if you, if you want to grab one of them so that you can wait. And have Devontae Adams in your lineup, and then if a game time decision, he's out. You can sneak in Geronimo or MVS or whoever you can grab as another wide receiver Sunday night or Monday night. I would I would be willing to do that because I, the wait is worth it for Devontae Adams. And we saw last week that Lafleur is fine starting guys who don't play practice all week. Geronimo and MVS they didn't practice right. All week long, they got the starts. 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan expects Manny Sanders, the newly acquired Emmanuel Sanders, he expects him to play right away this week against the Panthers. Are you interested in playing him, Jason? I am hesitant to play him, but I think you can't. I mean, he's he's going to be fed and probably forced a few targets to, to show off the new shiny toy. I just don't expect him to have a monster game. Raiders running back Josh Jacobs with his shoulder. He did not practice on Wednesday. John Gruden, referring to it, says he's got a legitimate shoulder injury. He got hurt in the Green Bay game. If you uh, <laughs> and quote and had it shot up, John Gruden just letting people know yeah. what they do. Hey, isn't this what you want? It is. I I find that refreshing, very refreshing, like a summer breeze. If you watch the game, Jacobs did leave for a while. He managed to come back. He still put up a, a solid game. He's questionable for the game. The Lions, Jason, the Lions, they moved up Paul Perkins. Smash a, Jackson. A.K.A. Smash Jackson from years ago from this ridiculous podcast. Paul Perkins is up off the practice squad. Implications for Ty Johnson if if Paul Perkins is the biggest threat to his workload. Yeah, I mean, there's there isn't really a big threat to the workload. Trey Carson and... Paul Perkins and J.D. McKissick smooches. I mean, you're, you you know, smooches is probably going to take that, that f you know, the third down pass catching role, although Ty Johnson was involved in the pass catching game as well last week after Carrion went down. But, I, I mean, we'll talk about Ty Johnson a little bit later. The matchup is phenomenal this yes. week. Yes, and speaking of smooches, J.D. McKissick, if you missed, if you missed out on the Ty Johnson lotto this week, and you got a uh, you got a spot on that bench. I think McKissick is worth the stash just to see how things shake out. He is a great pass catcher. Patrick Mahomes, he's been drinking those Saquon Barkley vitamins apparently because he got in a limited practice. He has not been ruled out. Who knows what's going to happen with Mahomes this Sunday? Raiders Tyrell Williams, he returned to practice. That's great news for him. Also, great news, Jason. Mm. Oh. The, the Lazard King he, has – there's been an upheaval. Right. Another revolution has taken place in the land of the reptiles. The Le Lazard King is out. The Lizard King – He's back, He's baby. back, baby. Sammy Watkins, full participant in Wednesday's practice. 
So you got to expect that he's going to play. Yes, I, I think he's going to play. The question is, what do you expect him to do playing all, with Matt Moore as quarterback? Do you expect much? I will start him. W would you start him or Emmanuel Sanders? You know what I mean? It's like one of those. Wow. There's a new situation here. At, at least with Sammy, it's the same system. I, man. But I'll then Emmanuel Sammy. Sanders is more talented. Sure. I'm going to go Sammy in that situation. Sterling Shepard. Wide receiver for the Giants. He is likely out yet again with his concussion. Thursday night football updates. Adam Thielen, you 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 you, you snookered us. You liar said I'm going to play. Now nah, he's out. It's being reported that Adrian Peterson is expected to suit up. I would not be playing Adrian Peterson if I had him for fantasy. Super revenge game. It's the super revenge game, but busted up ankle versus the Vikings. No thank you. Chris Thompson. The other running back for Washington, he is out. Reminder on tomorrow's show, we will play the game of in or out, projecting if we think guys are actually going to play. And if you want concrete proof of who is in and out, we have the Foot Clan Game Day Alerts available for those who help support this independent podcast. Jointhefoot.com is just one of the many perks you get. Like if, if you're not a part of the community, yesterday you missed a sensational footcast, an extra show just for the Foot Clan, Jason and I had an excellent time. I, got, I was finally yes. after a thousand sh combined shows, I was able to sit in front of the board. I'm the captain now. Yeah, engage. So if you want to check that out, join the Foot dot com and do not forget Sunday Live. I will be taking questions, tilting, breaking down news one hour before kickoff this Sunday. Let's get into the matchups. Fantasy Forecast. Reminder, Dallas and Baltimore are on the bye, so don't try and play those guys because you'll get zeros. Seahawks 5-2, and two, Falcons 1-6, and six, a 51-point over-under. The Seahawks are almost, almost a touchdown favorite. Uh, we'll see if the news of Matt Ryan in or out can sway that line or not. But Russell Wilson, he has been fantastic for fantasy purposes. The Falcons are not good on defense. They're allowing the second most passing yards per game. Russell Wilson is in. Matt Ryan. How are you feeling about Matt Ryan, Jason? I know that he burned a lot of people. It may be similar to the, the Jared Goff play of sure. a couple weeks ago where he was in your lineup. He really hurt you. You can sort of take the free pass with the injury where he left the game however he was stinky till then but Mitchell Trubisky last week just a g absolute garbage dumpster of stench and then like a good garbage man he relished in that time and put up a good fantasy game Matt Ryan could have saved his day we don't know but he's got the bum ankle is he gonna one do you think he'll play Two, if he plays, are you going to use him for fantasy purposes against the Seahawks? Dan Quinn said he's expecting him to play, so I think that he will. Dan Quinn is very much playing for his job going into the bye week. If Matt Ryan does not play, they have no chance of winning the game. So I think Matt Ryan gets out there. If he does play, I am fine putting him in my lineup. I realize he's not at 100%, but if you look at the last month, the Seahawks have given up a top 12 quarterback finish to everybody, uh, <laughs> and that includes Baker Mayfield. That includes a Jared Goff game. So, yeah, I think this is a, a, a high-scoring matchup here because the Falcons can't stop anybody, um, and the Seahawks' defense is not the same as it's been in years past. I, I would uh, certainly start him if I, if I could, okay. if he's playing. Chris Carson, nearly 24 opportunities per game. He's locked and loaded in there with Rashad Penny getting, quote, this is just the way things have worked out. Also known as you're not as good as Chris Carson. Get off the field. Devonta Freeman, he has had 90 plus yards in three games. Those three other the three other games were not so great, including being ejected this past week. You don't like Freeman, Jason. It's been very noted on this mm -hmm, show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But can you play him as a running back too this week? Sure. I mean, you, 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 I mean, you can, he's been okay. He really has, uh, other than when he was ejected, he was the running back 18, the running back 16, the running back three. And then he was ejected last week. No idea what he would have done. Uh, you know, yeah, you could play him. It, this is a game that's at home 
And I think, like I said, they're playing for Dan Quinn's job. I think that the Falcons are going to go out there and give their best. If they quit, then it's like they right. They, they don't like this dude. We know what's going to happen. At the wide receiver position, this matchup is interesting because it's more about the secondary options. Julio Jones is in. Tyler Lockett is in. Calvin Ridley, mm -hmm. upgraded situation. Dare I say a very upgraded situation with the trade of Mohamed Sanu to the Patriots. He's had six-plus targets every game except for week three. That workload should go up even more. And then on the other side of the ball, DK Metcalf is licking his whole chops. He's licking his whole chops. Hulk. Oh, Hulk, Hulk. chops. Because he's a Hulk of a man. Sure he is. I've, and, I've seen him. And when the Hulk refers to his chops, he does it in the third person. Oh, I did not know that. Now you, now you know. I'm happy to bring that knowledge to you. DK Metcalf is in a great spot. Falcons 28th against fantasy wide receivers, giving up 35 points a game to the position. I love DK Metcalf. I really like Calvin Ridley. Where are you on those two guys? So um, I, I think I think both are good plays. D, you know, DK Metcalf is a uh, red zone monster and a deep threat that is perfect for the Falcons' defense. Like you know, if he's going to end up this year with five or six bomb touchdowns, and you had to guess which games they came, this would be the game where you'd be like, okay, I think th I think this could happen. So that's his mo, and that is the uh, the the faultiness of the Falcons' defense. So yes, I'm good there. On the Calvin Ridley side, man, if Matt Ryan plays, which I, I expect him to play based on what Dan Quinn is saying, I think he's a really, really good start. Um, you know, everything I just said about giving up quarterback ones, that, you know, that's the passing game. That's going to some of these wide receivers. And Calvin Ridley has had a bizarre snap rate. Like his snap counts right. Underutilized. should be in the 90s. You know, you you just brought up he's had six or more targets in all but one game, but that's coming on like listen to his his snap counts over the last few games. 76, 75, 64, 58, 65 percent of snaps. What is he doing? Get him out there more, and now he's going to have to be out there more because Mohamed Sanu's gone. So yeah, if Matt Ryan plays, Calvin Ridley should have a a, a nice uh, beginning of the rest of his career because I think this is oh like uh, Calvin Ridley the is beginning going of the rest. Calvin Ridley is going to be a great player. Yes. Just he's going to be a very fantasy relevant player for the next five or six or seven years. And it starts now. Austin Hooper is in a smash situation here. Any interest in either of the Seattle tight ends is a decent matchup against the Falcons defense, but hard to trust Luke Wilson, who plays about half the snaps, and Jacob Hollister. So I'm going to answer the question for you. It's no. Uh, we are not interested in... But fun fact, Seattle has the fourth most uh, passing plays of 20 or more yards. Atlanta's defense, they've given up the fourth most passing plays of 20 or more yards. That's exactly what we're talking about with DK Metcalf as, yes. as a good option. Cardinals, 3-3-1. Three, three and one. The very 500 Cardinals are traveling to take on the Saints. The Saints are 6-1. and one. They are having an excellent season. We have a 48-point over under. The Saints are favored by 9.5. Kyler Murray has been great for fantasy purposes. Had the uh, uh, just a little turd this past week because of the Chase Edmonds explosion. Are you going to trust Kyler Murray to be a QB1 on the road against the Saints? Um, I, I uh, It's tough because whenever I look at my rankings, I you know he ends up a little bit higher. The matchup on paper is good. Kyler has been great. He's got the rushing baseline. All those things are true. But if you really look, um, you know, some of the top 12, the, right now, the the Saints have only given up three top 12 performances. Two of those were on the road. Only one was at home. That was week one. That was Deshaun Watson. You know, the other games that they've had at home, Dak Prescott, that was one of his bad games. You know, it's like, this is, this is, I think Kyler's first experience really being in this type of environment. This Very might be hostile. The, this might be the loudest stadium. If not, it's certainly in the top three um, that he's ever played in in his career. Uh, can you start Kyler? Absolutely. But the the range, I don't think his baseline is as high as it usually is. Kyler or Josh Allen? Josh Allen. Kyler or Kirk Cousins tonight? Kyler. All right. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater... <sighs> 
Are you considering streaming him against this Cardinals defense? Yeah, it's it, it's certainly something that you could entertain uh, if Drew Brees was if Drew Brees is active. You know, that's a guy that I mean, check your waivers. He might have been forcibly sure. dropped, um, or if you've been holding on to him, I would I would start Drew Brees. I would not start Teddy. I realize the matchup is unbelievably juicy, but where the Cardinals are beat, I mean, Patrick Peterson is back. So what? when you look at like, oh, the Cardinals are always getting beat. Well, they were always getting beat without Patrick Peterson. If Patrick Peterson's on Michael Thomas, and then it's like, well, they'll get yeah. beat at tight end. Okay, Josh Hill, is, is he right? Really, maybe. Maybe Josh Hill beats the Cardinals, but my point is like the matchup isn't that great for Teddy Bridgewater. If it's, if it's Drew Brees, Michael Thomas is going to have a fine game. Also, if it's Drew Brees, Ted Ginn is in play for me. Ted Ginn at home with Drew Brees is always flex-worthy. At the running back position, Alvin Kamara, if he plays, you play him. If he does not play, you play Latavius Murray. But can you play Latavius Murray if Kamara is active? Yeah, I think you can. If, if, if Kamara is active, I think they're going to have a pretty even split here. And Latavius Murray has had two. Okay, so you, you, you think that the injury will factor into the workload of Kamara this week? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to come back and be like, okay, Kamara, you get 18 carries, Latavius, you, you get four. I think it's going to be a much more even split, and this is a defense that I, I think that's going to be the game plan, especially if it is Teddy Bridgewater, is going to be to beat the Cardinals on the ground. Their offensive line is better than the Cardinals' defensive line. They'll succeed there, and I would start – I mean, uh, he's not a must-start if Kamara is active, but he's a flex-worthy player. So I would be willing to start uh, Latavius Murray. Larry Fitzgerald has had five or more receptions every game except for this past week. New yep. Orleans giving up the third most points to the slot. Or Is Larry in for you? And if he is, is he a two or is he three? Uh, Larry, Flex play. What are we yeah, looking at? Yeah, I think Larry is a is a wide receiver three. He's he's a consistent target. We still don't have much more information on Christian Kirk. I think that plays a role. It's interesting because Christian Kirk and you you think of like okay, New Orleans given up a lot to the slot, and so that's Larry. But that's not Larry. That's Larry and Christian Kirk. They're right. running four wides a lot. There are two slot guys, and so it, they've done it not as much recently though. I think they've done it not as much recently because Cliff Kingsbury actually is one of those offensive minds that tailors his offense to the people he has on the field. Okay. And I think that's because they don't have that second slot guy. If Christian Kirk were to come back, I think you'll see a lot more four wide receiver, which would be a huge boon for Kyler Murray. I mean, they, they want to utilize those slot guys, and that is the biggest weakness of the Saints defense. So I, I think, I think uh, Larry's better than a flex, but probably a wide receiver three. Chargers two and five, Bears three and three. Gross. I I label this matchup as gross. Mm, okay, I see that. We got a forty and a half point over under. The Bears are favored by four. Here is why it's gross. Because Philip Rivers, you playing him against the Bears? No. Sure. Mitch, Mitch Trubisky, you playing him against the Chargers? Hopefully not. Uh, please no. 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 Like no. Don't. No. Not unless you're tanking. <laughs> Which, don't do that. David Montgomery, only an idiot would run the ball five times in a game or so we've heard. Also, look out. Matt Nagy's calling the shots look, this, this Sunday. He's calling plays. This is actually good news for David Montgomery. I mean, I, you, we hope. I think it is. When, when he comes out and says only an idiot would you know, uh, not run the ball more. And then he is basically saying, I'm taking over play calling duties because he wasn't the one calling the plays. He's going to run the ball more. And so now was he staring at his OC when he said this? <laughs> right. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I'm not an idiot. Right. Frank. I don't remember the, the OC's name. Um, but yeah, I, the, the question in the press cred actually came from the OC. Are you going to run the ball more? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, of course, only an idiot uh, wouldn't run the ball more. So the thing is here is that that's where you beat the Chargers. We've seen it throughout the course of this year. We've seen it through the you know last season. They're not built to stop the run very well. Um, they're right now they're they're twenty second in fantasy points given up to the running back position. So if Nagy takes over, and they give the ball to David Montgomery, uh, he's not a a must bench guy to me, even though he's. You know, in that four touches for nineteen yards. Exactly. Exactly. I think a lot of people are going to say he. Yeah. See, Jay's on my side. All right. 
I think a lot of people are going to say you cannot start David Montgomery this week. I don't believe that. I think you can. Not that you, not like I'm super excited and benching Todd Gurley, but like, you know, if if he's on your roster and you need him to be in your flex, I'm not petrified of that. I, I, am I crazy for that? No, I I I tend to agree with you. That's the just go. It's narrative, but going through how angry he was, saying literally, "I'm not an idiot," and. If you go back to the time with the Kansas City Chiefs when Matt Nagy was an OC there, Kareem Hunt was dominating. And then the team lost its way. It lost its running game, and they really started to struggle for about three or four games, I can't recall. And that's when the play duty, uh, play calling duties got handed over to Matt Nagy. And that's, as, mm-hmm. that's when Kareem Hunt started getting 20-plus carries a game and had a string and became a, a, a fantasy league winner in the playoffs. Yeah, 100%. And it's not just narrative. It's not just that. I mean, that is narrative, and that makes sense, but it is also the matchup. I mean, right. the, the the Chargers on the course of the season, only two weeks have they not been a uh, giving up a top 12 in, in weekly scoring to the running back position. One of those weeks was the Miami Dolphins. So they were able to somehow, That's a pass. some way, find a way to stop that Miami Dolphins offense. Outside of that, last three weeks... They've been in that top 12. Even, even um, you know, uh, last week it, it seemed like it wasn't the, you know, the best. But Derrick Henry uh, had himself a really good game even yeah. though you lost that bet. Uh, yeah, I did. So you heard it here. David Montgomery, Jason Moore's start of the week. I'm fine with that. I, he's, you know, sometimes I make these starts of the week that are not like must starts, but they're confidence plays. I would, I would be willing to do that. Tariq Cohen, you are only playing him in desperate times, if you're in a PPR league, otherwise, yeah. you move on. The other side of the ball at the running back position, this is another place where things just get gross. Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler, my goodness, the Chargers are 27th in rush success rate. <laughs> Melvin Gordon has been objectively bad in three games, 36 carries for only 81 yards. Nine receptions, only 34 yards. He has a touchdown and two fumbles. Austin Eckler, meanwhile, he's having a heck of a season. He's the running back three. He is playing out of his mind, especially when he's being utilized as a wide receiver. But it's the Bears. (laughs) Well, yeah, it is the Bears. But I'm saying head coach Anthony Lynn, they're, they're all in on Melvin Gordon. And it's hard to see a path where... They really look at Melvin Gordon and say, you know what? I think our team's better if we just use Austin Eckler. So Melvin Gordon's still going to be forced into these situations. The matchup stinks yet again. I'm playing Melvin Gordon this week, but I'm doing so as a low-end running back too. I would much rather play Austin Eckler for his five or more receptions. Yeah, I mean, you're you're not excited about the matchup. Um, you know, Eckler had just such a monster week last week, but – I don't think that's indicative of, of what's going to happen week in and week out. This is not a good matchup, even though the last few weeks they have been beaten on the ground. Um, so you're if you had to start one of those two. I would got, play Eckler. Yeah, I agree. Keenan Allen. It was awesome. Those first three weeks. Do you remember that? That was great. Yeah, I remember the last month as well. It's been terrible. And now you get the Bears, who have not given up much to the wide receiver position. Sixth against the position, under 24 points a game. Keenan Allen, still a 24% target share. He leads the league in air yards. I think he would padded those stats those first three weeks. This Chargers team has been incredibly different since the addition of Melvin Gordon. I can't imagine that all these offensive woes are directly linked to Melvin Gordon, but they might be. Uh, but you're still playing Keenan Allen. Are you interested in Mike Williams? No. I'm not. Since no. the return of Hunter Henry, I'm not interested in Mike Williams. The, Mike Williams has has been pretty good, but this isn't the matchup I want to play with that. I want the number one. I'll start Keenan Allen. I, I think Keenan Allen is, you know, look, I, I know it feels bad. The matchup's bad. He's been bad for three weeks, but he's still, I mean, you just said it, right? He's still 24% market share. That's a good number. He's going to get his. If you're in a, any kind of half point, full point PPR, Keenan Allen's going to be a good play. And he does this. He has stretches. We talked about this over the last several years where he has, 
usually like three or four bad games in a row, and then he just gets right back on the horse, becomes Philip Rivers' favorite target again, and keeps on a going. Um, so that's what I expect to what happen. What will be interesting to see, though, is can that happen with the return of Hunter Henry, who is dominating in his two games, nine targets, eight targets, and coming through with – uh, 100 yards the first week, 97 yards the next week. Like Hunter Henry's playing fantastic. You need to get him the ball. And those situations where we have seen Keenan Allen have his hot cold stretches, I mean, especially last year, no Hunter Henry. It, th that factors into what Keenan Allen, what he will be moving forward for me is just how involved Hunter Henry has, has been. I expect Keenan Allen to have a bounce back but I, I, the bounce back, I can't see it being anywhere close to those first three weeks. Yeah, I mean, you know, you would expect him to be hopefully a top 24 wide receiver this week. All right, and then Allen Robinson. I am afraid of Casey Hayward, yeah, uh, this DB is... for the Chargers, but I'm, I'm still playing Allen Robinson with confidence because Mitch Trubisky has eyes for Allen Robinson and no one else on this team. Yeah, Hayward is allowing the fourth fewest fantasy points per game to left wide receivers. But Allen Robinson, nearly 10 targets per game. He will be hyper-targeted. If things fall, fall apart for the Bears, Allen Robinson will be hyper-targeted. I'm still playing it. I'm not benching Robinson. Yeah, it's really hard to bench, but it, you know, th with Mitchell Trubisky throwing the ball and Hayward uh, over him, this is kind of a recipe for interceptions. Yes, interceptions will happen, but Robinson... But then you got to keep throwing the ball. Yes, Jets one and five, Jaguars three and four. We have a forty-one and a half point over under. The Jaguars are favored by nearly a touchdown. Sam Darnold, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. You play? Are you gonna play him? Sam Darnold is definitely afraid of ghosts. All right, the Jags. I've, I've learned. Yeah, um, it's, it's a middle of the pack matchup. That's why I ask. the The Jaguars are right in the middle, fifteenth against fantasy quarterbacks. That's kind of where they are all over the map. The Jaguars are not a terrifyingly bad situation for for uh, offenses and for fantasy offenses. So Sam Darnold, co but coming off of that game, do you have any any type of confidence in him playing against the Jags? I I don't have a lot of confidence in him playing against the Jags. Um, you know, it, it it's it's not the worst matchup. I will say this: if Herndon suits up. And he has been practicing now. He's finally back at, you know, this got in his first practice of the year. If he plays this week, I think that there is more hope for Darnold. Darnold's schedule really, really, I mean, we've been talking about it for a while, really opens up after this week. Um, I, I do actually like the Jets in general um, in, this, in this game. So it's not like I need to pivot away. If you're in a two-quarterback league, I think Sam Darnold is fine. Um, you know, you, you had a, another linebacker this week for the, for the Jaguars, who's been playing a lot of snaps every single game. Uh, he just had surgery, so he's gone. I think this is a uh, surprisingly good matchup for Lev Bell. Um, and I think it's a good get right game for him. If you've got Hernan and Robbie Anderson, uh, the, the Jets offense is going to bounce back. I mean, two weeks ago against Dallas, it was like, oh man, this is a real, you know, Dallas was a. At, right. at that point was seen as this great team and they were awesome the Jets looked great then you go to uh, you know you go to home and have Tom Brady and Bill Belichick come and lay you over your lap and give you a spanking it doesn't feel good when you're looking at a team through the binoculars of the Patriots everyone looks terrible it makes it, it makes teams look terrible and it makes it you, like you look at the Jets and say no, what no Never, never again will I play a team that put up that performance on Monday night, but you have to move on. Uh, the matchup is okay. Gardner Minshew, 48 rushing yards this past week. Minshew mania, uh, 10 touchdowns to two interceptions on the season. I think he is in play for a streamable guy. I don't think he's my favorite streamer of the week, but he is interesting. Leonard Fournette is going to feast. He's averaging 26 opportunities per game. He, uh, he should have more touchdowns. He is a positive regression candidate in that category. The Jets are 27th against fantasy running backs. Leonard Fournette, full confidence. Let's get to the more interesting stuff. DJ Chark. Do, 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 do. DJ Chark, Jason, is this, are we having another Chark week? 
Yeah, I, I, I think we are having another Chark week. Right now, the Jets' secondary, they are 31st. They're the 31st best team against wide receivers. Uh, well, 18th best. They're the, oh, I'm 31st looking at, was that last was last year, year yes. yes. Um, but the matchup against Tremaine Johnson is one yeah, of the biggest what you, yes. cornerback mismatches this week. Chark has been great. Yeah, I mean, he's... I mean, right now, Chark is a, is a top 10... I think he's wide receiver five, something like on that, on the season. So yeah, I don't, I don't imagine you can bench Chark at all. I completely agree. Didi Westbrook, Didi, my sweetie, not practicing today. Hopefully, he will still play. He had a nice week last week. Robbie Anderson, one for ten. That's that Patriots lens that I'm talking about. What you need to look at is eight, eight targets this last week. It only turned into one for ten. The Jags have given up the fifth most uh, fifth most passing plays of 20 or more yards. Jamison Crowder, nearly a 30% target share with Sam Darnold. Do you have interest in these guys? Yeah, yeah. This is this is a game where I'm not uh you know, th this is a 41 point over under. There are two decent defenses here and two middling offenses. So you could see it going either either direction. I would take the over in this matchup. Okay. I think a couple big plays by DJ Chark and Robbie Anderson get the ball moving, get the score going, and I think this turns into not a giant shootout, but I, I like the pieces. I would play Robbie Anderson. I would play DJ Chark. Obviously, you're playing the two running backs here, so you know I'm I'm uh, I'm not scared by either one of these matchups. If you can grab Robbie Anderson off the waiver wire, or if you can buy him very low, reminder. Now is the time to do it because Robbie Anderson, I believe, is about to go off for the second half of the season. And I've, I've also – I said this last week. I posted it on social media a lot as well. But, like, my my number one stash, you know, that, that you can get because, like, Buffalo has been a great defensive stash, but right. they've been rostered. The Jets DST. I think you can play them in this matchup. Um, you yeah, they're know, okay. They're okay. Middle is fine. It's not one where you'd need to bench. But from here on out, that schedule, they're playing these teams where I think the Jets' defense is going to look really, really good and powerful in about six weeks based yeah. on the opponents that they will Agreed. trounce. Giants, 2-5. and five. Lions, 2-3-1. 49-and-a-half half point over under. The Lions are favored by a touchdown. Matthew Stafford averaging 292 passing yards per game. The New York Giants are giving up the fifth most passing yards per game. Matthew Stafford is a sensational play this week. I'm sure he's not on the wire anymore. That's why we talked about him as a stream of the week on Tuesday so you could grab him and play him. Daniel Jones, since the week three explosion, averaging under 200 passing yards a game, one touchdown, and nearly two interceptions per game. No thank you. Saquon Barkley, he's in. I'm are trying to make this – this matchup is easy so far. Yeah, I mean, so far, uh, bench Daniel Jones, play Saquon. Yep, all yep. right. More interesting, Ty Johnson, newly crowned starting running back for the Detroit Lions. He will split time with J.D. McKissick. It remains to be seen, will he split time with, uh, with Paul Perkins or any of the other running backs on the team? I am projecting mostly Ty Johnson and J.D. McKissick. It should be noted. When carry on left, Ty Johnson got uh, about half of the running back carries. More importantly, he was getting that goal line work, that really important high leverage type of touch situation. Ty Johnson, Jason, where do you got him ranked? Yeah, Ty Johnson is, uh, I think, a running back two this week, a guy that you probably should be starting. I would say that in most of your leagues, when you picked up Ty Johnson and spent for him on waivers. You waiver, paid to play him. Yes, you paid to play him. You should play him. The 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 Giants. It's funny because they're the, they've given up the fifth fifth most passing yards. They've also given up the fifth most rushing yards. They're they're very kind. It's not going well. And you know, as far as fantasy points given up to the position, both wide receivers and running backs is phenomenal. But the last three weeks, you've got three top ten running back performances against the Giants as far as team totals go. Arizona obviously crushed with. Uh, Chase Edmonds this is you bring up the goal line work that is Ty Johnson's job uh so with you know if they get around the goal line and I they think, should in this matchup they should I mean you've got a lot of touchdowns being scored on the ground uh, in the goal you know 
goal to go situation for the Giants. I, I like Ty Johnson a lot. I think that if you picked him up, you should start him. I'm I'm not afraid of. Well, let's wait and see because the reality is he's taking over the carry on role, but now there's no Ty Johnson behind him. Right. So he'll probably get even more work than carry on was getting, uh, just out of necessity. J.D. McKissick, the other running back for the Detroit Lions, I think he is worth a desperation play. In a PPR. In, yes, in a PPR situation. Sterling Shepard, we talked about it. For the Giants, he's expected to be out. Golden Tate, the last three games, six targets, nine targets, 11 targets, and came through the last two weeks, 102 yards and 80 yards. Golden Tate against this defense, this Detroit Lions defense, ranked 19th against fantasy wide receivers. Jason, what's your confidence level on Golden Tate? My confidence level is in a PPR league, you can start him for a middling performance. I mean, he, he had that monster week a couple weeks ago for sure. Um, but I, you know, I don't expect him to have long bomb touchdowns. That's just never been Golden Tate's MO. Um, well, he doesn't do bomb touchdowns. He does yak touchdowns, though. Right. But I'm saying two weeks ago, he was getting yak. Yeah. Yak. Fantastic reference, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but two weeks ago, that's what you saw. You saw the, you know, the the deep sideline catch that was. Um, I, I think that's going to go more towards Darius Slayton. Golden Tate will be a yak guy, but the you know the defense against wide receivers for the Lions, they've been okay. So I am I'm just okay. You can start him, but I'm I don't see Golden Tate as a as a must start guy. Last week's hero of the day, coming in with 13 targets, 10 receptions for 93 yards and four. The Quattro mm. in the touchdown department, Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. Let's start with Marvin Jones. Will he follow up last week's performance, Jason, with anything of note? Yeah, he, he definitely could. I mean, you know, the last few weeks, he has been disappointing in the results until last week but not disappointing in the air yards and the targets. You know, he's had five targets in two games before, nine targets before that. He's involved. It's just a matter of whether it hits. This is a defense that it can hit on. All that being said, um, you know, you're not going to flip the script here. Kenny Galladay is their one. Uh, he, he wasn't needed last week, and so you had this really disappointing week. You you have to start Kenny Galladay. We're going to talk about him more. Oh, my. I think he's my. a smash play. Last week, two targets. Two targets. Yeah. I mean, l listen to his targets up, and, and, and that's because you can't be targeted after Marvin Jones catches the the deep touchdown. I'm going to check the math, but I think uh, – Yeah, check my the receipt, computer. Yeah. Oh, you want me to check the computer? Yeah, it knows everything. All right. It so checks right. out. But here's the targets on the season. Nine, ten, eight, nine, nine, two. I'm going to go ahead and say the two was the outlier. This is a phenomenal matchup. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, you know, I, I think it's it's a great matchup for both guys, but the targets should go back to Kenny G. All right. Evan Ingram, he's back in. TJ Hawkinson, do we see an uptick in work for Hawkinson with the departure of carry on Johnson. I know we're excited for Ty Johnson, but is there a world where you're more interested in the Hawk strap, TJ Hawkinson, now that carry on is out? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's running enough. <laughs> oh he, man. He's running enough. It's, it's, it's him and Noah Fant both are, they've got so many things going for them. They're running the routes. They're getting the targets. Um, the, the matchups are okay. This isn't, this isn't the best matchup if you're looking at like what the Giants have given up this season. They have they have not been scored on uh, by the tight end a lot. But if you dig a little deeper and look at their actual matchups, Arizona, okay, they don't really utilize their tight end much. New England, two weeks ago they didn't even have one. Have a tight end. Minnesota with Kyle, you know the the skeleton of Kyle Rudolph. Washington, uh, you know, Tampa Bay, they don't even have a talented tight end, right? Oh, well, apparently not because they don't target them, which is unbelievable. But, um, yeah, so I, I, I think you can start Hawkinson. He's one of those guys where there's probably five or six players when you don't have one of those top eight guys that you could take a shot on. You could take a shot on him, but there's a guy, my start of the week, who's available out there for you that I would rather play. Okay. 
Buccaneers two and four taking on the Titans, who are three and four, forty-five and a half point over under. New signal caller Ryan Tannehill for the Tennessee Titans came in and had himself a day, boosting the fantasy value of Corey Davis and AJ Brown, at least the perceived value of the wide receiver duo. Jameis Winston on the other side, coming back off of the bye week. It's not been. Uh, it's not been the best NFL performance recently for Jameis Winston. He's been fine for fantasy purposes, but 10 interceptions, that's one behind Baker for the league lead. Jason, you got to play one. Jameis Winston or Ryan Tannehill, same matchup. Which side are you going on? Oh, man, that's so tough because you've obviously got a high-producing pr fantasy option in Jameis versus a difficult defense or a low, historically speaking, a low sure. uh, producing. Well, Tannehill's had his time in the sun. It's yeah. been it's been a long time. It's been multiple years since we have seen him. I, I this is off the top of my head, but he was a top twelve quarterback at one point for fantasy purposes, mostly because he ran. Yeah, he. I don't know if he's running anymore. I I think if I had to choose one of those guys in this matchup, even though they're coming off the bye, I would choose Tannehill. Um, I'm I'm a little bit worried about Derrick Henry this week. Okay. The the Tampa Bay defense against running back is really unbelievable um I mean you're 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 talking about a defense that has given up nothing and they have not faced bums right I mean they faced Christian McCaffrey twice so you, you know they're not going to be able to stop everyone always L listen to this so this is I, I was looking for this Mike Clay tweeted this out the Buccaneers have allowed a league low 315 rushing yards to running backs. Listen to who they face. McCaffrey, 38 carries because they faced him twice, only 68 yards. Barkley, ever heard of him? Yes. Eight, eight carries for 10 yards. Gurley, five carries for 16 yards. Kamara, 16 carries for 62 yards. Breida, 15 for 37. And Coleman, six for 23. They've faced a gauntlet right. of great running backs, and they're not giving up rushing yards so and rushing yardage is really you know that's the that's the crux of Derrick Henry he's going to get going get 26 carries and cross that you know 80 90 yard mark and and so I worry in this matchup but that does say that Tampa has been so beatable through the air and by yes. so beatable I mean is easy peasy lemon squeezy so I think to answer your question in a very long-winded fashion, I don't even remember the question anymore. That's all Tannehill I'm versus Winston. <laughs> I'm going to go Tannehill. All right, I like it. I think I lean Tannehill as well. The running backs for the Buccaneers: Peyton Barber, Ronald Jones, Dari Agumbawale. We have a three-headed monster of sadness. I'm not starting any of them. I side with you, Jason. Derrick Henry. I you're you're playing him yep. unfortunately but I am tempering my expectations maybe I'm adjusting my lineup accordingly Derrick Henry has plenty of times fallen headlong in for a touchdown you know oh, what I mean? yeah. like yes. the, the, Derrick Henry does not have to have the yards he can he could just get a goal line opportunity he is the clear cut center of the offense you're always going to take that opportunity even in a bad matchup so you, you have to start him but you can be worried Chris Godwin yeah, you're going to play him. Mike Evans. Yeah, you're going to play him. It's been a roller coaster, but you're still going to play him. Corey Davis and A.J. Brown. I am interested in both of these guys. If I have to pick one, I'm in a PPR situation, I lean going with Corey Davis. But A.J. Brown is fascinating to me. He, we've already seen him have big games on the back of humongous plays. A.J. Brown is a very skilled wide receiver, a very tough to tackle wide receiver, and now he's actually going to get snaps and targets from Ryan Tannehill like he did last week. One game, impossibly small sample size here, but we have to try and project from that moving forward. Are you as intrigued by the Tennessee duo, especially in this matchup? I'm not, I'm not placing season-long love on these two guys yet, but in particular, this matchup against the Buccaneers, who are ranked 31st against fantasy wide receivers, I am very, very intrigued in both of them. Yeah, uh, I, I think someone here is going to have a great game because everyone has had great games against Tampa all year long. The difficulty is knowing who. Is it Corey Davis? Is it A.J. Brown? I think A.J. Brown's the more talented guy, but I think Corey Davis, 
look to be Tannehill's first read. And so I lean Corey Davis in this matchup. But the thing is, is there's a difference between being intrigued and then being confident to start them. I'm still not confident off the one game sample to start them in a pinch. You could do worse, but I would rather I'd rather look elsewhere. But we're we're missing the real point of this game. This game is all about the backup tight ends. Ooh. That's where the fantasy gold's gonna happen, Foot Clan. And what he means by that, OJ Howard, who was all lined up Oh to, he yeah to be my tight end start of the week. I liked him against Tennessee. 24th against fantasy tight ends. Like There's many reasons to like him. The Titans have given up a, to a, a top 12 total point for performance to the tight end position every week except for when they played Denver. I was ready to rally the troops behind O.J. Howard this week. This is good news for you, Mike. Because I don't have to do it. No, not because you don't have to do O.J. Howard. The matchup is great. Like the tight end is is a friend of Jameis has been historically, and this is a matchup where the Titans are really tough against wide receivers and really bad against tight ends. So it lined up. That's why you were going to make OJ Howard your start of the week. It was, and then coming out of the bye week on Thursday, OJ Howard did not practice, and it was a downgrade. So he, I mean, I you know when you see that, it's rare for them to not be out. So. At this point, we I know nothing. This happened while we were recording yes. this. The news came out that O.J. Howard uh, didn't practice, so we don't have any details. But based on the fact that you're coming off a bye, and then it's a, it's not limited like what happened to Darren Waller last week. This is did not participate. You have to expect there's a chance he misses this game. If that's the case, I assume your pivot would be to Cameron Bray. I have no choice. But that would but Cameron Bray without O.J. Howard. Uh, but is a yes. better option, I believe, than O.J. Howard with Cam with Cameron Bray. Let me ask you this, Jason. Let's let's get conspiracy theory here. Is O.J. Howard about to get traded? Oh my God! You're serious? You're I'm saying just, you're saying this is not injury? I'm just, I'm just throwing is. it out. There has been trade rumors. They're, New, New England trying to get him. They've been adamant. They are not trading O.J. Howard, but the deadline is coming up. The NFL trade deadline, I think, is this Tuesday. And they did not. He didn't practice because any chance, maybe he's. Any chance. There's always a chance, but I, I think this is an injury. All right. So and, we'll, we'll see. All right. And then. On the other side of the ball, Delaney you, Walker did not practice yesterday. Yeah. Now, you might say that's a veteran rest day on a Wednesday. We don't have practice reports yet, but he usually is a limited participant in Wednesdays. So he's dealing with an injury. If he is out, my start of the week. Starts of the week. Let's start at the tight end position. Let's do it. Guess what? My tight end start of the week is Tampa Bay. Whether I want it to or not is now Cameron Brait for the reasons I have said earlier. Jason, my, you're up. So you're right in the sense that um, the Titans are a good matchup four tight ends, but they, you know, the, the Buccaneers are saying, you you ain't got nothing on me. The Buccaneers are the second worst. They're the, on, they're the only team somewhat close to Arizona as far as a smash play against tight end. And Jonu Smith, the 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 backup, but... We, know, have, we have all been waiting with for bated Jonu breath for Jonu Smith. In, in the fantasy community, especially the dynasty community, we've been waiting for the Jonu Smith experience, and you're calling for it this week. This week, I'm calling for it. He's my start of the week. They're, the Bucks have given up five tight end one performances. Last year, Jonu Smith was sixth uh, among uh, – or I'm sorry, uh, yes, uh, six a month tight ends last week in yards per route run. And when, when – um, Delaney Walker went out last year. You had a stretch of games where Jonu Smith was really dominant. You also have him with four of his nine receptions going for 20-plus yards. You saw that beast run last year. Jonu Smith will have a really good game if Delaney Walker is out, so he is my start of the week. If, if Walker's back out there, then Jimmy Graham would be – it never feels good saying Jimmy Graham, but he's always, he's always an absolutely fine play – after those top eight. Sure. My wide receiver start of the week, I alluded to it a little bit earlier, but DK Metcalf, I'm giving the confidence boost to the wide receiver two of the Seattle Seahawks. Gets the Atlanta Falcons. He projects to see Isaiah Oliver. 
in coverage most of the time. Falcons giving up the third most points to the wide receiver, giving up the third most passing yards per game. I want in on this Seattle offense this week, and I might have to take the back door because like Chris Carson and Ty Lockett, Russell Wilson, are they're owned everywhere. I have seen DK Metcalf on multiple waiver wires across my leagues. You could pick him up and play him this week and expect a, a huge – he has a huge ceiling. The floor is still a little crumbly, not the safest, but the ceiling is massive this week. Sure. My start of the week, I've got two starts of the week. <clears throat> Andy's out. I wanted more because these two guys are guys that I think you have to get in your lineup for sure. One is Kenny Galladay. Don't be stupid. Two targets last week. He disappointed. Yeah, he'll He's be been back. a smashing success. There's only been two smashing. weeks. Only two weeks on the season that the New York Giants have not been in the bottom 12, as far as fantasy points given up to wide receiver, the five most uh, you know, passing yards, uh, the fifth highest passing yards given up. And um, look, the matchup, the, the specific cornerback matchup for Kenny Galladay, uh, he has the strongest advantage of anyone, according to Pro Football Focus, over DeAndre Baker this week. The Giants have given up the second most 20-plus yard passing plays. Stafford has the highest percentage of 20-plus yard passing plays in the NFL. Yes. So start Kenny Galladay. The other one is John Brown. Against the Philadelphia secondary, like we've seen it over and over and over and over. You can get beat by them. John Brown has just been so consistent. He's going to, you know, he was my start of the week last week, got a touchdown. So I've got the duo, Kenny Galladay and John Brown. Get them in your lineups. They're both going to have great weeks. Shady McCoy is my running back start of the week. He gets to play the Green Bay matchup, which has been very kind. Second most points to the running back position, four top ten points to the position already allowed by the Green Bay defense. And he's the guy. Damian Williams has been thrown off of the boat, and LaShawn McCoy is the starting running back. He is the primary running back. Yes, it's a timeshare, and Darrell Williams will be in on third down, but LaShawn McCoy will get the goal line carries. Perhaps they need to lean on him in a plus matchup a little bit more if, in fact, Matt Moore is the starting quarterback for the Chiefs. Yeah, my uh, running back start of the week, it's another bounce back like Kenny Galladay, a guy who disappointed you big time last week, but he's going to have a great game. That's Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack this week, look, you look at the carry counts on the season. He is, an, do you know what his pace is? Do you have any idea? I don't. So he's been he's been solid, but he's on pace for 317 carries. That's a lot. That is, I mean, that I, I, I that's I a lot. From memory, I believe that would have led the league last year. Um, if not, it would have been top two. So Marlon Mack is getting the ball a ton. This is, I believe, a very winnable matchup. You know, people are worried about him off of running for 2.4 yards per carry last week. Denver as a matchup, right? At the beginning of the year, we we're like, oh, you got to play your running backs against Denver. Then they got a little bit better. But the reality is they're not a great team. And the and last year, a lot of the complaints about Marlon Mack were he puts up so much of his points in those games where they're up and they win by... He was a game script back. He was Yeah, he was a game script back. And in those games where they won by 14 points, oh my gosh, he just had these monster games. Do you think that the Denver Broncos are really going to be super competitive? With, no. This is one of those games no. where at the end of the game, they're going to win by 12, 14 points, and Marlon Mack's going to crush them. My quarterback start of the week. I'm going back, Jason. Oh, announcing King Goffrey, Jared Goff. I'm squeezing the orange. I'm squeezing out as much juice as I possibly can from Jared Goff. It worked out in the plus matchup against the Falcons. Another juicy plus matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals. The third most points to fantasy quarterback. Three top six games already. Top six performances, three of them already allowed by the Cincinnati Bengals. Jared Goff's in a good situation. If you streamed him last week, you can do it again. Yeah, my uh, my quarterback start of the week is going to match up with John Brown. He's Josh Allen. Last week, he was the quarterback 10 uh, the Eagles are, you know, two games on the season. They have not allowed a top 10 quarterback, not just a, a quarterback one. And one of those was Luke Falk. Somehow they were able to stop. Uh, <laughs> Good outside, for them. Outside of that, I mean, 
look, the the Eagles have been terrible, and you've got a high rushing baseline with Josh Allen, with John Brown being able to get deep. I, I'm going to start John. I'm going to start Allen in almost yes. every situation. I like Josh Allen a lot. I'm going to make this up on the spot just because I'm gauging this off of the fab money that Andy spent yesterday. But Andy, Andy's wide receiver start of the week has to be. Money, 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 money. It's Kenny Bills. Kenny Stills, Kenny Bills. I, he, I don't know if he agrees with that or not, but he's not here to defend himself. All right, the greatest segment in the history of podcasting. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. This week's Locked and Loaded Boom Boom is sure fine. He'll finish the week number one because he's Greg freaking Zerline. Digging deep for that one, Mike. Incredible Scraping stuff. Scraping the bottom of the barrel trying to find Incredible. someone you could try to rely on this week. Greg Zerline. Greg Zerline. The boom boom kicker of the week. Mighty Reminder, fine. tomorrow's show, we will be talking in and out, looking at those injuries, <clears throat> going through the rest of the matchups. Want to thank today's and every day's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. Sign Stefan Diggs jersey, 65 bucks. Someone paid $65 and got a jersey that was that was touched by the hands of Stefan Diggs. It was autographed by the hands of Stefan Diggs. And is JSA certified yes. that, that, uh, that the signature is authentic. Make sure you go to pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. You'll get five bucks for your first auction victory. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a spectacular voyage being the captain for these multiple days. Hopefully I get to do it again tomorrow. We'll see. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.